Hi everybody, today we're gonna to look at scan tools and what we can do with them and how to hook them up on your car. Okay, most Let's cars that you're gonna see for OBD2 systems are gonna have their diagnostic connector under the dash, just on the driver's side. So we're gonna sweep up underneath here and take a look at that 16 pin connector right here. And uh, there may be the odd car that has them in a different location, but they're generally by design in that kind of standard area for most cars. So not naturally pointing that that way specifically. Some are up a little bit at a different angle underneath there, but they're tucked in there generally in that area. And that's the connector we're gonna run the wire off our scan tool to, or if it's a wireless, that's where you're gonna put that little adapter on, right in that area. Now that is usually a 16 pin port where the connector will go to. And we're gonna take our OBD2 connection and slide it right into there and it goes and I'm going to see that the light has gone on over there. Okay. Now I've placed a scan tool here on a toolbox for our convenience so we can kind of look at the screen nicely. Now one of the first things we're going to do is power up our scan tool. Now it takes a couple seconds for this guy to boot up but now that it's booted up we're just going to let it uh, throw its display screen on for us. Got different options on this screen here. We've got a scanner option, we've got OBD2 uh, configuration options on it, as well as we've got some guided component tests we can do on it. So we have an oscilloscope and a multimeter function on this particular unit. We can look at our previous data that we've uh, entered into the scan tool, and there's also some settings on this particular machine on this particular scanner that'll customize the, uh, the use of the machine. Now, a little something about the guided component tests over here. It kinda, this particular unit is gonna tell you if we put this particular vehicle in here, which is 1999 GMC Jimmy. We can do specific guided tests on it where the, the scanner will guide us how to test specific sensors on there. In this case, if we're on the air pump, it'll tell us exactly some of the instructions that go through it. So it's a guided test on there. What most people use when using a scan tool is actually uh, collecting uh, trouble codes and, and looking at data stream, and I'll point out how to do that. So we're gonna go to scan mode in this case. Every scanner's got a little different way of getting there, but uh, first thing you're gonna have to do is enter the data into the into the scan tool. So we're gonna go and collect the information of the vehicle and its VIN number and all those things like engine and everything else that we need to input. So this is a 1999 GMC Jimmy. And we're gonna go with automatic ID. And this is gonna collect the VIN number out of the ECM, but we can also go manual ID if we choose to. We'll connect to it. automatic transmission that's correct and it has no air pump okay now we're connected here now one of the most basic things that we're going to look at is information around trouble codes so we're going to look at in this case we'll focus on the engine but we could also look at issues that might be occurring in the transmission uh, we might want to look at the health of the anti-locking brakes the airbag uh, body control module items heater and air conditioning uh, instrument panel cluster and transfer case are all areas that we can investigate in here. So if we want to access trouble codes, we're going to go into the engine section and we're going to have a little sub menu coming up there where it says code menu, data display, functional tests, generic functions, troubleshooter, and each one gives you specific options. But we're going to go into code menu first and display codes. Here you can see what we have in a matter of all powertrain codes. We could look at history codes, what's been stored in there in the past. Also, what's failed this specific ignition cycle. Generally, we're gonna use that if we see a light go on and what's the last thing that's coming up. I'll show in there. Um, malfunction indicator lamp. Uh, there's may have requested messages in there as well. None showing at this point. All right, and we can see what was the last test failed in there. And test failed since last codes were cleared in here. So in this case, we're gonna look at all powertrain codes. It has none. So at that point, I'm gonna to wanna to start the uh, engine and look at other 
other things like data stream. So nothing in here problematic. So the nice thing right now is I can get out of here and I'm going to actually do some simulation. So we're going to go put a code into this. So we're going to disconnect some disconnect some sensors in there and see what we can put in here. I've Okay, so I've disconnected a map and map sensor, so the check engine light's on, that's to be expected. But I'm going to start it up and see if that check engine light stays on. Normally it would go out. Okay, it goes out temporarily, not wanting to start too well. And now they got it running. Okay, we'll restart it and see if that check engine light goes on. And it's staying on. So we know that we've set a code in in the uh, ECM. So we're going to shut it off and we're going to go take a look at what shows up on the scan tool. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to re-scan this and right away as soon as there was something set up in here it automatically picked up an issue with the map sensor and P107 map barrel signal showing up here. Now our map sensor here is combining a map and barrel sensor in one. That's why we're showing two signals on it. So right away we're able to see what area of the car has problems. And it's useful information because we know in fact that it is a mass airflow sensor issue and also a map slash barrel sensor issue as well. Both make sense. Now this doesn't completely solve your problem. It tells you where to go on the car to, to fix the problem. And you have to start then looking up the procedures on the manual to see the recommended process of getting to the heart of the problem. While we're here and it's running, we got those two sensors disconnected, what we can do is step out of this and we're going to go look at some live data on those sensors. And we'll step back a little bit further. I don't want to clear the codes yet, although I could. If I go to freeze frame records, we're going to see at the time these codes were established, we can look at that information on there. The site is going to collect the data when I hold up that information and it's telling me when that, when that information was pulled up, so the mass airflow sensor is showing a signal of zero on there, which doesn't reflect what it should be reading at that point. Now, this code was established when the car was actually just starting up, so our throttle position sensor shows it wasn't open yet. That's why it shows zero. So that's a snapshot of when the event happened, which is really helpful information when you diagnose cars. It showed that the temperature when this when the MAF sensor code was set, it was 145 degrees Fahrenheit. The engine RPM was at 645 RPM, so it was idling when this code was set. So snapshot information is handy. I'm gonna step out of that, and we could do the same thing on the MAP sensor and the barrel sensor. Now, I could clear the codes right now. I have them disconnected, and if I connect them back up, it would basically clear the codes right, right up. If I don't connect them, the codes would stay. So you have to repair the problem to really get rid of the code long term. Now let's go to data display and see what the live data is showing on this particular car. Now if we look at map sensor and map sensor data, we're seeing zero showing up as far as grams per second on that. We're going to accelerate and it should stay fixed at zero. Now what we're going to do is go connect it back up and see if that changes. So we're going to connect the map sensor up. And we should start seeing an active signal on there. And we, we immediately do. It starts rising. So we got 5.89 grams per second roughly. And if we look at the map sensor, let's find it. Map sensor is showing a voltage of zero on it as well so that's not an accurate uh, reading it shouldn't be fixed at zero if we rev it up it's not changing so let's connect the map sensor back up and see if we get data again now that we've connected it you should start seeing that sensor reading yes it is and now it's responding in live we're going to blip the throttle a little bit and see if that is showing active information active information and it is so right now we've got our sensors working again and we can look at all the different sensors down the line to see how they're working so 
coolant temperature is climbing. It's up to 188 degrees Fahrenheit at this time because it's warmed up. Okay, we're gonna to go to another screen here so we can see the oxygen sensor values. Go to sensor data, see if we can find the O2 sensors on that screen. There we go. So now we're starting to see the voltage. Now, if you remember me talking on the bench when we did bench testing for oxygen sensor values, when we brought um, the torch into the oxygen sensor and watched the voltages coming off, we've seen it sweeping from about 0.1 volts to as high as one volt. Now, this is representing millivolts. So if you see, in this case, 100 millivolts, that would be 0.1 volts, uh, 800, 850, 900, that would be uh, 0.9 millivolts. So you can see how quick and active those oxygen sensors are. And that is, in this case, oxygen sensor bank one, sensor one. So it's a front sensor, in this case, on the driver's side. We got oxygen sensor, or should be able to find oxygen sensor bank, bank two sensor one as well. And we do, it's sitting on the opposite side. And you can see that they're both really active. You can also look at the oxygen sensors behind the catalytic converter right now. Right now, that catalytic converter isn't as hot as it should be. It's only been ran a short amount of time. But once we bring the temperature up on the catalytic converter, those numbers on the post-catalytic converter oxygen sensor should be fairly stable. And right now, I don't like the way the sensor is moving so much on the post-secondary one, but it hasn't really ran that long, so it's not a fair assessment for me to start blaming the catalytic converter just yet. And that's how we use a scan tool as far as accessing data stream information on it. Oh, one other thing the scan tool can do is it can access misfire data. If you've had a misfire on the car, you can actually look at that section and it will look for times when you may have had a misfire on the, on the engine and it will actually count the amount of times that it's, it's picked up a misfire. In this case, there's none. So that's, that's a good sign that means all cylinders are pulling well. Now let's clear the code on there. Now we'll go to the code menu and we'll finally clear the codes. Yes. And we are, should be able to see that in the displayed code area that there are no codes present. So we've cleared the codes. We've looked at our scan tool data as far as what the sensors are showing. And we're just gonna disconnect that. And that's our and tool.